I think I've said this before, but the cleaning business, like it was never meant to be our main business. Katie and I started it. Our intention was simply to launch this business, hand it off, and we wouldn't go start another business. Well, a year and a half later, this little cleaning business, it kept growing and it grew with the least amount of effort and it just seemed like it had the most momentum going. And so at that time, armed with that data, Katie and I made the decision that we were gonna turn this cleaning business into our main business. And so we ended up shutting down the our fitness business. And so our first step, once we decided to go all in with it, we just needed to find clear goals. If we were gonna take this serious and we wanted to have something that was exciting, something that got us like energized and ready to, and ready to like take on the world. So the new goal was actually to be a million dollar cleaning business. We created three different milestones for our, our cleaning business and we or, and we use sports analogies in order for it to, like, it to make sense. And so we have our playoff goal. And so our playoff goal is to get to $83,000 a month. That became our first goal and our playoff goal. Once we hit that goal, then our next goal is actually we, we want to win the championship. We want to get into the division championship series, and that is going to be a $100,000 a month goal. And then our Super Bowl goal is to get to $160,000 a month, which is a $2 million a year company. And so the next step we did was actually just reverse engineered these goals, starting with our first goal, which was the playoff goal. And so what did we need to do every single day? What did we need to do every single week in order to uh, get closer to these goals? And that's when I created the vision sheet. Vision Sheet was born out of necessity. And what it did is it took the data from marketing, sales, recruiting, fulfillment that I showed you in the intelligence sheet and it put it all on one spreadsheet and it broke it down into a weekly weekly data that allowed us to see every single week how we were doing in comparison to what our goals were. And so this allowed us to see how each, depart, how each department affected one another. And so along with this Vision Sheet, we paired with a 30 minute meeting. And so this was the first time that I actually had done a, a consistent weekly meeting with our team is when we started doing this vision meeting with this vision sheet. And this vision meeting, it gave our team clarity on exactly what the business needed in order for us to get closer to these goals. And so in June of 2022, we had grossed $31,342 according to our QuickBooks. And we started this vision meeting in July of 2022. And so last month and 34 meetings later, February of 2023, we did $71,697. This vision sheet again, it's laid out really, really nice. And our sales gal, Katie B, she's the one who actually made this look really pretty. So the first thing that we track every single week, and then this is tracked every single week, is what is our currently monthly revenue? And so we actually track two ways, right? We track what is in our, our CRM, which was called Zenmades. And then we also track what hits QuickBooks. And so we track our current monthly revenue in both Zenmades and in QuickBooks. And we track what our weekly revenue was in Zenmades and QuickBooks. We have a weekly PR uh, that we track as well. And then we also are tracking what our outstanding collections are. So we have a less than seven days and we have a plus seven days. So under seven days, I'm not, I'm not as worried about those numbers because less than seven days means that we either haven't hit the card yet ourselves or we're still waiting for them to send their checks or pay their invoices. But it's the one that are over seven days. Those are like when that number starts to get high, that's when I start to ask the team more questions. Then we actually start to dive in like, well, is there, do we have a couple of big outstanding invoices? Are people in communication with us? So the next section we track is marketing. So every single week, Kitty D, our, our sales guy, she puts all these numbers in there. And then from there, where each of our leads are coming from. So we have our, our, our Facebook funnel. We have our people who are messaging us on Facebook or Instagram, people who actually called us. We have Google requests and ads. We have instant bookings. And then we have turnover BNB. And we have a, a book now farm as well. And then based on all of our ad spend versus our ads coming in, we have our cost per lead. And I have a broke down that if we have, if we're getting between zero and $20 a lead, that's great. If we're, if we're paying between 21 and $34, that's good. And if we're paying 35 plus more dollars a lead, then that's poor. All right, the next thing that we track is sales. So, and so we have our discovery call scheduled, discovery calls performed and discovery calls booked. And so then at that point, it, auto, it automatically creates a, a booking percentage. So again, in between zero and 50%, I calculate that as poor. If you're between 50 and 70%, that's good. If you're 70% plus, that's great. And conversion calls, how many conversion calls are we getting on? And then how many conversion calls are, are we booking? Booking percentages, same numbers. And so these just allow us to see if our salesperson is number one, getting on enough calls. If they're getting on enough calls, then are they doing a good enough job on the phones? Scheduled showed closed. And then also our conversion showed and conversion closed as well. And then new clients. So when we're tracking our new clients, we're looking at how many total cleans that we get this week, total number of recurring clients, and then we're tracking how many new clients we're cleaning every single week. And so our recruiting funnel is really simple. Then we're doing the same numbers. Interview scheduled, interview showed, people who offered the job, people who accepted the job, people who declined the job, onboarded and infill training schedules. And then below this, we actually have what's called technician training dates, where now we have somebody who's in the field training. We can see what days that they start training. We can see what their expected graduation date is. And we actually can see who's our cleaning trainer that is going to actually train them as well. So these are people who are full technicians. These are all technicians who are out on doing solo cleans. And so in here, 
here under like you, you, like in, on here I have a cleaner one, cleaner two, cleaner three. On our on our sheet, we actually have the names of the of the Sparkle bosses in there, and then we also track if they do, uh, how many calls that they're doing that week, and then we actually score them on a score of zero to five. So, and then scoring. So we create the scoring system basically out of necessity to see like who are our top cleaners and when it comes to our top cleaners how do we make sure that they keep getting fed and we keep giving them hours we keep giving them cleans we score people out of five points number one if they're full-time so for us we consider full-time over 28 hours number two attendance so if they don't have any call outs then they get a point for not having any call outs Number three, do they have any correction cleans? If they do a clean and they have to go back and, and fix it, that's considered a correction clean. That would dock them a point. If they have zero correction cleans, they would get a point for that. Teamwork. So teamwork is like, let's say that somebody does get sick and somebody does call out. Who's going to help take over that clean so that way the client doesn't get affected? Or if we have cleans on the on the weekends, who's going to step up and take those cleans on the weekends? So we're always looking for teamwork as one of those two things. And then communication. So when the office staff is communicating with the cleaners, in the past, we had issues with with the, with the cleaners not responding to them in the WhatsApp thread. And so now that we have this on there, it's like they must communicate somehow. They must like acknowledge that they, that they received the, the message from the office staff. If there was a correction or if there was a complaint specifically about the cleaner, they must acknowledge it and they must respond to it, like make sure that, that they got it. And so that's what communication is. And if they get all five of these, so again, if they are full-time, they have, they show up to all their cleans, they have no correction cleans, they show teamwork by picking up a clean or just like abiding the core values. And then also communicating to the office staff under each situation, then they get a five out of five rating. And this gets done every single week. And so the people who are five out of fives, they have preferential, they get preference when it comes to making sure that they get hours the following week as well. So this is how we score this, how we make sure that we keep our cleaners like, on top of their game and keeping our service like top notch and efficient. So the next thing that we do on here are hours worked. So if we go back here, we have hours worked, we have job ticket hours, and we have Google reviews. This is these are all other things that we track that are on this on this vision sheet. And so right now we have I think 58 Google reviews. When we first started like paying attention to Google reviews, we were at like 30 something. And again, I'm telling you, just the power of just tracking something. So we didn't always track Google reviews up until like a month or two ago. I was like, okay, let's let's add another thing to this vision sheet. So again, once you track something, it tends to get better just by simply tracking it. And then you can, once you're starting to track it, you know, like, then you start thinking of ideas and you start to take action on like trying to try things that actually make the number move. So Google reviews. So now we have two different funnels that we're really paying attention to. And so you can see here that we have our goals of $80,000 a month, which breaks down to $19,250 a week. Uh, in order to do that, we charge, we're averaging $55 per job ticket hour. And so we need 352 job ticket hours every single week. We want our cleaners to work on average 27 hours a week. And we know that we need about 13 cleaners. And so every single week, these numbers automatically get populated based on uh, what's in the, in, in the vision sheet. And it'll show that the monthly revenue is whatever it is. It'll show the weekly revenue is whatever it is. Is, and it'll show the difference over here of where we are. Same number of hours worked, number of cleaners. Based on all this tracking of the data, it just gives you a really clear picture of what needs, like what needs to get done. So it's like, okay, we don't have enough cleaners. That's the first step we can do. In order for us to get the number of job ticket hours we need, we need more cleaners. And then once, once we get enough cleaners, we get enough job ticket hours, we look at the weekly revenue. And if it's not on point, then it's like, maybe we need to charge more. That's where we get into our second, our second funnel here is, is the client funnel. And so again, we have the same thing. We have our monthly revenue, we have our weekly revenue, but then here we have our revenue per clean. And so our goal is to get at least $200 per clean. We want to get 96 total cleans every single week. We want to have 220 recurring clients and we want to clean nine new clients every single week. And so when we, when this number automatically gets populated in here, we can see exactly where we're at and where we're either below that number or we're above that number. And so again, this data just allows us to say, okay, well, we need more cleans. So what we got to do to get more cleans? Maybe we need to market more. Maybe we need more cleaners, right? So this is, what is our problem? When we're able to put all this number, to, all these numbers together, we're able to see what our actual problem is. Yo, are you a cleaning business owner who's looking to build a big old business? Well, I have just the for you. See, I did a free masterclass where I shared automated marketing funnels, I shared customized sales system, I shared a recruiter funnel, and I shared the business intelligence sheet you saw in this video. So if you want access to those all 100% for free, and you wanna build your cleaning business to a big old cleaning business, go ahead and click the link down below, create your free account, and I look forward to seeing you on the inside. Let's go.